Hey Grace, my name is Faith Arnold and I'm so glad that you joined us for this Good Friday service. The student ministry is taking over tonight, so you're in for something great. As a church, we are praying that you are well, even though we can't be together physically, we are still one church in spirit. <laughs>
The Bible is not a series of disconnected stories. It is a single narrative in which every story, every character points beyond itself to one who is greater. The story of Adam and Eve is not just about the first man and woman. There is a true and better Adam who passed the test in the garden and whose obedience is ascribed to us. There is a true and better Abel who, though innocently slain, has blood that cries out not for our condemnation, but for our acquittal. There is a true and better Abraham who answered the call of God to leave all the comfortable and familiar and go out into the void to create a new people of God. There is a true and better Isaac the son of laughter, of grace, who was not just offered up by his father on the mount, but was truly sacrificed for us all. There is a true and better Jacob, who wrestled and took the blow of justice we deserve, so we, like Jacob, only receive the wounds of grace that wake us up and discipline us. There is a true and better Joseph, who at the right hand of the king forgives those who betrayed and sold him and uses his new power to save them. There is a true and better Moses who stands in the gap between the people and the Lord and who mediates a new covenant. There is a true and better rock of Moses who struck with the rod of God's justice now gives us water in the desert. There is a true and better Job, the truly innocent sufferer, who then intercedes for and saves his foolish friends. There is a true and better David, whose victory becomes his people's victory, though they never lifted a stone to accomplish it themselves. There is a true and better Esther, who didn't just risk losing an earthly palace, but lost the ultimate heavenly one, who didn't just risk his life, but gave his life to save his people. There is a true and better Jonah, who was cast out into the storm so that we could be brought in. There is a true and better Passover lamb, innocent, perfect, helpless, slain so the angel of death will pass over us. He's the true temple, the true prophet, the true priest, the true king, the true sacrifice, the true lamb, the true light, and the true bread. The Bible is not a series of disconnected stories. It is a single narrative that points to one person, Jesus. Hi, my name is Paul Mendoza, and for Good Friday, I'll read you Romans 5, 6 through 8. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. Now, most people would not be willing to die for an upright person, though someone might perhaps be willing to die for a person who is especially good. But God showed his great love for us. 
by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Now, Good Friday is a day that we choose to celebrate Jesus sacrificing his life and showing his great love on the cross up there. I am eternally grateful that he chose to die for my sins, even though I wasn't even born yet. And the best part about this is that he died for everyone's sins. And for that, I am eternally grateful. So let's take this Good Friday and think about the past, present, and future and how God has impacted that already. Hey, Grace. It's Noah. Juan did a great job of explaining how Good Friday is a chance to reflect on how much Jesus loves us and sacrificed for us. Paul sums this up in Romans chapter 5. Listen as my boy Brennan reads from the scripture. Romans 5, 3 through 5 says that we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials, for we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character, and character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment, for we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Romans 5, 3 talks about rejoicing during trials. I don't know about you, but that does not seem right. It doesn't make any sense to rejoice during the hard times. Trials are not enjoyable, but God's word reminds us that the fruits of trials can be really great. Paul says these fruits are endurance, strength of character, and confident hope. Lately, it seems like all we hear about in the news is social distancing, sickness, job loss, low oil prices, and even death. What would it mean if we looked at all of these trials and looked at them in the, Paul's perspective in Romans 5? I challenge you to spend some time this Easter weekend thinking about the things you have to rejoice over. Science has proven what scripture has already told us, that one of the best ways to combat anxiety, depression, and fear is to make a list of all the things you can rejoice about. On Easter weekend, it's easy to start the list with the salvation that we have through Jesus. But I know that if you just spend a couple minutes thinking, you'll figure out that there's a long list of things that you can be thankful for. Now some of our students will, tell you, will give you some ideas. Hi, my name is Jonah, and I rejoice today because my family's happy and healthy. Hi, my name is Jasmine, and I'm rejoiced because I'm adopted. Hi, my name is Caden. I rejoice today because my family is safe. My name is Ariana Kondry and I rejoice because I have family and friends. Hi, my name is Joshua and I rejoice because of my family and they're not sick. Hi, I'm Madison and today I rejoice because I'm getting lots of dog and baby snuggles. Hi, I'm Azari and I rejoice because I'm healthy. Hi, my name is Brennan and today I rejoice for our fridge being full. Hey Grace family, my name is Bailey and I rejoice because I have freedom to worship without fear. Hi, I am Bobby and I rejoice for the change in my life. I want to encourage everybody to find a chance to enjoy communion over this Easter weekend. A big part of celebrating communion is remembering. I hope you will be able to remember the gift of Jesus' sacrifice, but also the many ways that we are blessed today. Please take a minute to pray with Haley. God, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to be able to worship together even when we can't physically be together. Lord, these last few weeks have been very crazy and very scary, and we do not know what the future holds. But God, you do. So I ask that even in the midst of everything happening, and no matter what's going on in all of our lives, that you would help us to be able to lay that all aside and to focus on you and remembering all that you've done for us that you sent your son to die for us so that we can be forgiven and live with you eternally. And that that is the greatest gift that you could ever give us and you give it freely, even though we did not earn it and we have done nothing to deserve it. God, I ask that as we go about these next few weeks that you would guide us and that you would help us to trust you no matter what comes because you have not abandoned us and you are in control. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name, amen. Hello, Grace. My name is Rachel. Um, I want to thank you for tuning in on this student ministry takeover um, on this Good Friday service. Um, please make plans to join us on YouTube or Facebook at 10 a.m. on Easter Sunday. Um, I pray that God, the source of hope, will fill you completely with joy and peace because you trust in him. Then you'll overflow with confident hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks again for tuning in for this Good Friday service. 
We are praying that this Easter weekend will provide opportunities for you to spend intentional time with family and with the Lord. We have a video driven Easter event available called Easter Jam that is for families of preschool children through high schoolers. It is available by going to www.gracewithdessa.com slash Easter Jam. It's all free, but a few supplies are needed. So go check it out now and then watch it as a family on Easter. If you have friends or family who you also think would enjoy it, share it with them. Happy Easter. Go be the church.